Hello everyone, this is Angela. Welcome back to my channel. So the last few weeks or so, um, you've all noticed I haven't done very much, and that's kind of because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to build. Um, <laughs> so I dug through some of my notes that I made to myself, some ideas, and I settled on trying to build something at Starlight Drive-In. Now this is a little bit of an adventurous idea, so that's why I am kind of trying to turn it into a Let's Build series so that you guys will keep me honest <laughs> and keep me on track with it because I can see it getting a little out of hand. Um, the idea is, uh, instead of trying to make one, build, one big city uh, here at Starlight Drive-In, which I've seen done uh, before and very well, um, I am going to try to build two small cities uh, or two mini cities or settlements or however you want to say it uh, all based around that sort of pond in the middle sort of like a warring faction sort of deal um, so let's go ahead and we'll get started all right so this part on this side uh, with the abandoned projector uh, diner kind of combo we are going to turn this into sort of a raider side um, so the idea really is to have one side be sort of taken over by raiders or moved into <clears throat> by raiders and then the other side would be just for settlers and have it kind of be a bunker hill sort of deal where they have talked to each other uh, a little bit and agreed to share the, the space either by force or <laughs> just trying to keep the peace or however you want to look at it so they're both trying to get access to that water in the middle since um, it's easy pickings really so uh, underneath here I thought would be a great spot to put our raider Chemden since any raider settlement is not complete without <laughs> a crap load of chems just kind of wandering around not wandering um, just sort of sitting around there we go sitting around everywhere so we're gonna go ahead and put in some flooring underneath here and um, I'm kind of trying to just fit it in here as best as I can. Uh, it, it's very hard to fit things underneath here um, because you really can't even walk like the space of this of this uh, this shack floor underneath there but you can get under there which is kind of cool. Um, the settlers in my <laughs> in here actually really like spending time under there, which kind of gets annoying uh, trying to decorate and uh, move things around under there. But at least I know they can get under there and move around. Um, they actually move around fairly well in the final uh, the final tour as well. So here we're gonna set up the uh, the front of the shop and I'm just gonna check and make sure I can still walk around underneath here so you can kind of see you can't really go very far but it is sort of like a really long hallway <laughs> with an opening at the end um, and to do this sort of shop uh, face the the storefront there we go <laughs> the what I'm gonna use to do the storefront is uh, these outer shack walls sort of the prefabs uh, mostly because they already have roofs attached to them and I didn't feel like making uh, trying to attach the roofs to these pieces and sort of building them from scratch uh, which I don't see any shame in doing that it's nice and easy to kind of make things go a little bit quicker so we're just gonna make a nice little opening here um, and I do like how this turned out um, it's very cozy and uh, very drug denny, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. I've got people constantly wandering in and wondering what I'm doing, and they're all very upset with me because I got rid of all their beds. This uh, Starlight Drive-In was the first place that I ever built in Fallout, and um, when I came back to it on this save file, I ended up deleting uh, or taking down, tearing down their <laughs> their. Uh, the structure that was already here with all of the beds and everything um, so they're all very upset with me before I did that I I did record it um, because I wanted to show you guys um, my first settlement it's a little bit of a, a touching moment it's also kind of hilarious because I get to just sort of laugh at myself and 
look at how I was building before mods came about, before I knew about the rug glitch, um, you know, within the first 10 or 20 hours of the game. So it's very interesting <laughs> to kind of look at, you know, even just from like a, this is how far we've come sort of standpoint. So uh, as I was rambling on there, I put a roof in and we're going to work on boarding up these walls. So underneath here was a little bit of a challenge, but I ended up using these half shack walls um, and I chose to use the horizontal paneling because it kind of, they sort of blend together a little bit better um, and they really work with the, uh, I put fence uh, pieces up on top just to sort of board that part up as well and make it very closed off, which I think works for sure. So here we go, we're gonna line this up and make sure it's nice and straight. Perfect. Then we're gonna board that little piece up and go ahead and start on the fence posts. So I'm not sure exactly what other, um, what other shops I wanna put in here. I have been sort of trying to keep a, a mental list of <laughs> what I would like to see in each settlement or what se each settlement kind of, um, what you normally see. I would really like to make some unique sort of shops that I haven't seen before because most of the time, I mean, you see uh, like clinics and, you know, um, you see clinics and general stores and uh, just the general ones that you get in the shop tab. Um, so I was kind of trying to think of different ones that I might be able to piece in here and have it be um, not quite so cookie cutter. Uh, so if you guys have any ideas for that, definitely let me know and it's possible that it will show up in the build somewhere. Um, <laughs> trying to work around this door was also a little bit of a hassle. Um, but I wanted these pieces, these fence pieces that I was putting in here, um, I wanted them to sort of blend together like they were just sort of, uh, well really the entire structure, I wanted it to feel very ramshackle and very, um, what's the word, just very pieced together um, with different, like this for example, I wanted that diagonal board in the middle to kind of cross over in front of, uh, of those horizontal boards so it looked like it was being held into place by that board and it kind of works here if I can get it there it is so I that was really the the thing I wanted it to feel very very much like they built it around in and around the uh, the existing structure and they used that as like a support system so I think that this part of it actually turned out very cool I was not sure how it was gonna turn out because I kind of just started building and I just recorded it um, so I think it worked definitely there were a few spots that <laughs> I got stuck trying to build, um, but it's it was a learning experience trying to build around this building, which is always fun. I like the challenge of trying to do that. So now that we've got that boarded up, we're gonna move up top, and um, this roof area looked very strange to me because I, I was trying to support it. Um, one of the things that I try to do whenever I'm building is uh, make sure that everything looks structurally sound um, and it's not just floating, uh, which was one of the uh, the main reasons that my old settlement, the settlement that was originally here, uh, looked so out of place and strange. Um, and uh, if you guys want to check that out in that video, uh, I'm going to upload it, I think, after this one goes up. So you can go ahead and check that out if you would like. Anyway, enough of tooting my own horn, um, that was one of the reasons that that one <laughs> looks so funny and it's so interesting uh, to go back and look at because everything is not structurally sound. So um, that was the point of this, of these fence posts. So I was I, unable to make the roof uh, supported and so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and cover it up, uh, which, you know, I think a lot of the game developers do that as well, like level designers, um, they cover up things. So, you know, it's not completely unheard of, but that led to me um, putting in these uh, sandbags next to the fencing, which is the main reason that I kept this piece in when I was editing. Um, each decision that you make whenever you're building leads to another smaller decision or even a big decision. Um, and it just kind of is like a building 
a building block, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, it just, it, uh, you know, each thing affects how it looks. But I end up taking this fence out so I could put some of these, uh, these upper shack floors in here to make an upper, this apartment. But I did keep the sandbags in, so now you guys know <laughs> where that idea kind of came from, how it kind of morphs and evolves and my my building style is very much I'm just gonna piece this together until it works <laughs> I was trying to decide if I wanted to move those stairs but I do end up moving them a little bit later and I think that turns out pretty cool this part I didn't plan um, I thought it was kind of cool that it wraps around to the other side I didn't realize that was gonna work out as well as it did but um, I am going to end up putting a door there so here we go, we're gonna add some of these walls, uh, give the structure a little bit of shape, make it not quite feel so boxy. Uh, it still does feel very boxy, but um, not really much I can do about that at the moment until I start adding some more things in um, up and around it and start decorating. That gives it a, that kind of relieves it a little bit. <laughs> For the stairs, I go, I go ahead and um, put this palette in and of course I gotta pick a green one because you know it needs a little bit of color lots of browns and grays and, you know I struggle a lot with this uh, the place anywhere tool because it it does that jump thing if any of you have the place anywhere tool um, you know what I'm talking about I'm, I didn't know, realize that I was the only one who I, I wasn't the only one who had that problem until recently but I'm glad that I'm my my system isn't just messing up on me and then we put in these shack steps, which I found out that my settlers actually use these. Um, as I was building, I, uh, or not building, as I was decorating, um, one of my settlers came by and used them and she walked down the steps and then she jumped down off of the, the sort of angled platform, which was really cool. I didn't know that they were going to do that, so it definitely worked out to put that there. So here um, we're just going to go ahead and finish up the building and then we're going to put some roofing in. So I have to go ahead and pick, pick a, a wall that's going to work for me here. Kind of just scrolling through all the different options that I have and uh, trying to pick one that looks kind of janky. There we go. That one works. It's got a little window and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and glitch that into place since for some reason it wouldn't snap. It seems like that would be something that would, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's because of that shack bridge that I had in the way, so I kept <laughs> I kept falling off of the uh, off the side of the building, so I put a little bridge there to kind of help me. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go up and check out our handiwork and add our roof in. And I picked these really slanted high roofs, um, mostly to just give the top shape. I wanted it to, I didn't want it to feel uh, flat and boxy on the top. Kind of like in the same vein as I was talking about a little bit earlier. So, I'll go ahead and add these in here real quick. Boom, awesome. And then, um, I... <laughs> I think I'm going to add a wall here, and I see this post, and I go, oh, actually, I'm going to put this this post down here. So, or at least I thought maybe I was going to add a post there, which kind of goes along with the idea that I go with uh, a little bit later in the video you will see, or in the tour. And these ball track supports, I think I was looking for maybe the stilts, the the, the pair of the, the supports, um, but I did find this kind of the, just the track itself. And I really like how it turned out. Um, if it kind of glitches in there well enough, it really looks like a decent support. And so I think I'm gonna start using that uh, in the future to kind of build up some of my supports where uh, maybe the angled ones don't work so well or the, um, the pillars, the, even the smaller pillars don't work very well. So that one definitely was a surprise to me. And then over here, um, I did take out the shack bridge because I thought it maybe needed a little bit less wood. Um, 
I don't want to use a whole lot of wood, but it is going to be... I'm going to use quite a bit of wood to try to fill out this entire thing because that would be the easiest thing I feel like to build with if you're building around an existing structure. Um, but, of course, I put it a little bit too close to the wood, this uh, scaffolding here. So I gotta move it, and I end up, you'll see in the tour, I ended up putting some plywood over the gaps, which really work to seal it all in um, and make it at least look like it's so it's uh, it's something you would want to walk on, but I'm not sure that I would even want to try to walk on it in real life. <laughs> and then down here, um, adding in some of these angled beams. The uh, It was really important to me when I was building this part of it, um, because it sticks out so far off of that angled platform, um, it was important to me to make it look like it was supported enough that it would be able to hold stuff on the inside. So that's why I spent so much time on the supporting aspect of it. Uh, and this one, I tried to put it underneath and I was hoping that it would fit somewhere. Um, I, it, I probably spent like three or four minutes straight just trying to angle that in there, right? before I finally just decided on putting it down here. So I cut that out for you guys. <laughs> and um, going back to the same idea that I had with this other roof uh, that I tried to explain a little bit earlier, um, underneath the shack, even though I did have that one ball track kind of uh, the, the track there, um, it still looked really awkward to me and I wasn't sure how to make it feel like it wasn't just floating there or just sitting there so I ended up just putting some more fencing in underneath and I think that really helped to kind of make it seem more cohesive with um, with the building that it was existing around so final thing here um, on this side I think I'm just gonna add this little support in and then we've only got a few things left to talk about or to put in here I guess uh, before the final tour. All right, so final thing I'm gonna add in to this shack. Um, this thing kind of went through a little bit of a transformation <laughs> from be from this to the final tour. Um, at first, I'm, I was going to close in the entire thing off um, and make it so that you could walk kind of around it, uh, but I. The more that I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. And so I ended up um, taking this wall down and putting in a support, one of those angled support beams up in the in the corner there, up against that the wall. Uh, and I put in like a doorway. So, because it, it definitely felt still very, I don't know, it just, it didn't flow right to me. So, but that wall that I just placed in here, um, directly to your left there on the screen did lead me to this uh, which like I said every building thing is like you know a stepstone so uh, I decide if I can find it in the wood tab Angela wood wood tab there you go um, I decide to put in a little shack like a, a bridge a shack bridge so to kind of walk around and I think it definitely makes it feel a little bit less rectangular gives it a little bit of shape a little angle there it's not super a super big detail but you know it's definitely something that adds to it so all right so here we go here's the final tour um, I do have to preface this with uh, a couple things so first of all uh, my little chem station here or not station um, chem shop there got pushed out somehow uh, so I ended up moving it back after I realized that I had had it pushed out during the recording uh, and also uh, the decoration in these tours uh, is not going to be super substantial right at the moment I will try to amp it up I think for the final tour once everything is completely finished but I want to make sure I'm leaving a little bit of building space for the rest of the actual buildings since I'm not sure how much I will have left. Now that that's out of the way, um, here we go. We've got this shack in here with some really janky looking furniture. Um, <laughs> it's kind of gross. I'm not sure that I would want to live here, but you know what? You can't be, uh, can't be picky when you're living in the Fallout universe. As long as things are working, then as long as you have a bed, <laughs> that might be the best thing. Nice Harambe chair there. 
and the the red light coming up from underneath looks really really cool at night for sure And you can see as uh, as I kind of come out here, the uh, you can see the angled support beam that I placed in there that I kind of glitched into the top piece of that roof. Right there, I think that looks so much better. And my settlers actually get stuck up on that roof quite a bit, so I think in the next video I'm going to have to try to uh, set up some scaffolding or something so they can actually get down. <laughs> and out here we've got our hub flowers for the experienced chemist, or the ambitious chemist perhaps, um, trying to make some psycho or some, I think berry mentats maybe come from hub flower, I can't remember. Uh, but in here, you know, fairly simple little shop. I think I'm going to turn that couch into an impromptu surgery center uh, later on. See if I can find some blood splatter in the CVA mod, maybe some military duct tape or something that makes it look really sketch. Uh, and then in here, you can see I've got people wandering through here because they love using that chem station back there. And that guy's obviously trying to work on some of those experimental plants. So yeah, I think this little drug den once it gets fully decorated, it will turn out to be awesome. So that's the tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like this video, give it a like. If you like want to see more, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am CW Courier. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.